Hello everybody, it's Michelle here with Angel Souls and I got the greatest suggestion for a video. I'm always saying use discernment, use discernment. When you're doing your practice, do discernment. When you're listening to practitioners, use discernment. <laughs> and someone asked, what do you mean by that? And how do we discern, you know, what entities are coming in? Who are we actually talking to in our meditations? So let's break it down right here. When I use that word discernment, I'm talking about listening to your gut instinct. Your body is incredibly intelligent. And if someone, let's say someone is, you know, a potential love partner, they look really good on paper. Maybe they're like, a, if you date men, like a Prince Charming type. And when you're around them, you get kind of a sick feeling in your stomach or you feel like you need to run away. And someone else might say, oh, you're crazy. That's your Prince Charming. You should be in love with them because they look good on paper. That feeling you have is just butterflies. Butterflies are huh, like a little crush that you have on somebody and you're kind of giddy. When you're feeling sick to your stomach, that's a warning. That is saying, hey, pay attention, right? So if you listen to everybody and you end up getting into a relationship with that person, maybe they scream at you. They verbally abuse you. God forbid other kinds of abuse. Maybe they're cheating on you, which is emotional abuse and betrayal. Maybe they lie to you about money, which is also a betrayal, okay? So listening, when we say discernment, listening to what your body is doing and trusting it, trusting that. If your head spins when you walk into a room and everybody else is saying, oh, you know, these are the greatest people in the world. They're so nice. They're so, and you're just like, I'm overwhelmed. <laughs> All right. Uh, listen to that. Even if it's great for somebody else, it doesn't mean that group of people are great for you. That's you using your discernment. I often use that word when we talk about what we take in for spiritual practice. Be discerning, right? If you come in contact with someone who's supposed to be a spiritual guru, now I'm not saying go around being paranoid or judgmental or trying to find something wrong with everybody, but if you go in, you have an open heart, but you're still shielding yourself, you know, with the appropriate amount of light and all that, and you're listening to what someone is saying and it's hitting you funny. Now, it can hit you funny because there are things within you that you don't want to look at and that you don't want to admit to yourself. It can also hit funny because it's a lie. Or someone might be saying, yes, I'm a spiritual guru, but you know they're ruthless. And, you know, they can be smart when it comes to spirituality, but that doesn't mean they're activated. And when we say activated, I mean your energy field is pulsing with not only understanding, but a way to share that understanding in a way that does not invade somebody else's consciousness or uh, invade and change their free will, right? This is why, you know, with psychic readings and stuff like that, if you're not very discerning, you're allowing someone into your energy field who can come in and plant ideas, okay, and then walk away and then you're the one scrambling to figure out how to implement what they just planted. <laughs> All right? uh, now, if you have somebody who's a psychic reader who is very ethical, they'll tell you, you make your own choices. I'm not here to plant seeds of suggestion. This is what I'm feeling. This is what I'm seeing. I'm reflecting it back to you because you've come to me and asked. And then I will lay it down and then you do whatever you're going to do with it. Right? So there's the difference. That's how you do some discernment. Discernment also can be about red flags. That comes into societal conditioning. And, you know, this collective world has had a problem with, uh, I'm going to call them dark energies for thousands of years. Okay. And part of that expression is getting us all groomed to think that someone being entitled is normal. Now, if you cringe at that and say, no, no, I'm not talking about your neighbor being entitled and taking your newspaper, <laughs> okay? Like, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about I deserve 
you know, all of the world's wealth while other people starve. I deserve to be treated better than you because I'm a movie star. That's what we're talking about there, right? So in our society, we honor that. We honor people who have, you know, um, been the picture of something we're curious about, but maybe we could never really live that way ourselves, Okay, we want someone to look up to, we like it when people step into that role and they create this illusionary existence, give us something to dream about, I guess. I don't know. So when we're coming from that place and you're coming up against people, like maybe, maybe that dynamic is playing out in the workplace, being discerning. And going, okay, it's kind of that, that phrase of consider the source, right? So if somebody comes up and they're incredibly critical of you before you might have really just taken that in. But when you have, when you're, you know, in your intuition and your intuition is healthy, it's not, you know, you just convincing yourself that you're the greatest thing that's ever walked the face of the earth and you feel so much and all that. But like without the ego, but that intuition is kicking off, you're, you're going to feel some negative energy off of this person it's not about what they're saying to you it's about who they are and that's that consider the source so if they're being critical of you they're just trying to find something to complain about right and so you can discern do I take that in is it real feedback or not when I you know years ago would get these really gaslighting critical judgmental nasty comments and I would stand my ground and then I would get <laughs> whether they're enablers or people who are narcissistic themselves coming into the comment section and just being abusive towards me because I I stood up to somebody else who was being toxic and they didn't like that. They, you know, it was all this control and just a lot of darkness kind of swirling around. And then when I just said no, like I literally just shut, it wasn't like, okay, I'm going to force myself to just shut it off. But really my feelings are hurt. I was just like, like literally just was done. And I was like blocked <laughs> blocked blocked and of course people like that love to go on a smear campaign because their ego again is so fragile that they have to go off and get people on their side by making you look bad you know it's a whole thing but when we talk about in terms of discernment considering the source when you see stuff like that you get really good at seeing through it almost i'm not encouraging anybody to invade someone's soul never do that but you can pick up what their intentions are. That's part of discernment. It's an intuitive uh, understanding of what you're really dealing with. Not an ego-driven, I just know everything, therefore I know how you feel better than you do. Those are not the same thing. There's also using discernment when we're meditating and we're inviting beings in. And I always say, people are like, well, how do I know if I'm talking to, and it's a great question, how do I know if I'm talking to my angel or some other thing that's trying to pose as an angel. And when I always say, use your discernment, what is your intuition telling you? Now, some people who are not in a healthy place, that discernment is not going to be functioning very well. I've had plenty of people come to me and say, my angels told me that I'm terrible and I have this and that, blah, blah, blah. Your angels would never say that to you. They don't negative talk. They can be straightforward. And if you're super sensitive and you think you can do no wrong, then you're going to see that as a bad thing and then block out the angelic messaging and then you're no better for it. You're putting this awful energy out into the collective. You're not, you know, we're not growing together, which is what we're here to do. So that's someone's discernment being off and having so much negative ideas about themselves that they would think that an angel would come in and have that to say. So discernment is, again, coming in, how do you feel? Do you feel peaceful and loving, but like a good friend is there telling you what you need to hear? You feel enveloped in warmth, uh, this divine love that you find it hard to access here through other people, but, you know, you remember it from another time and space. That is angelic presence. You can also use your words. Your words have frequency. When you invoke, you bring in. Okay, you invoke light energy, love and light. So this is where people get love and light from. And that's why they put it out there. Um, it has a frequency, right? So I am a big fan of saying, are you Archangel Gabriel of God's purest love and light? 
Now, some people say that's going too far. You do you. I don't know. But God's, that, that's a powerful word, purest, <laughs> very powerful word, love and light. Power. Absolute power. And that phrase carries such a frequency that if this isn't Archangel Gabriel as they're trying to present, they just kind of disappear. They, they, I don't know what happens to them. They like vaporize or something. They just like, like you didn't destroy that energy, but it went away. Okay. Now, for those of you who work with angels and archangels quite often in a real way, not you tell yourself that, but in a real way, uh, you just know. <laughs> you just you just know who's coming in. Every once in a while I feel a little off and I'll be like, what's that? And it could be my soul pulling in uh, or pulling from another timeline or something like that. But if archangels are working with me, and I just want to test it and go, not that I'm encouraging you to test angels and archangels, but like, are you Archangel Gabriel of God's? And they, he'll say, or she'll say yes. Like before, I, cause they know what you're going to say before you even say it. And there's no linear time for them. So there's like a looping time moment where they could be answering you as you're asking. That's usually a good sign that this is an archangelic presence. that's coming in of God's pure love and light. So you can always use that as a way to back up your discernment. So I hope that makes sense. If you have further questions, just leave them in the comments and we're going to leave it there. I'm sending you all so much love and take care.